welcome okay. into this legitimate road trip. The three of us, the three amigos, are live from the Win Las Vegas inside the Blue Wire Studios. I've been so excited to come back here. We were here in March. Channing was on a little screen over there. And I remember sending you text messages saying you would be so pumped and excited when you came out here to see this studio. And uh, when you walked past, you're so shy right now. Yeah, no, I'm actually... Pretty, I'm just taking it all in. It's a really good studio. It's really nice, right? This is really it's tight. Dope, right? Yeah, yeah. You you did a good job explaining it, but it's Thanks. better than how you explained you're, it because you're, there's a little liquor store right next door. Well, the <laughs> liquor store, and you're not used to the – so people at, you know, on TikTok, we're not telling anybody, but there's this – you can basically see in here and walk by and just crack jokes. And so Channing's a little nervous that he people outside can hear the things because normally we record. And oh, no, our, no, I'm not nervous. There are certain things that we edit. That I have a sometimes I have a potty mouth that you know children are watching. Look, Here comes your crew. Ah, oh. my squizod. Oh yeah, your team s- Team Sanders at, at Sports Entertainment. Where is Team Sanders? Uh, he just took the last flight out. Shout out Doug Sanders. Oh. For those that remember the early days of road tripping, uh, the one episode that never made air that still to this day really upsets oh, me um, is the Logan Fry episode. Yes. So I have one brother. He is a unique individual. <laughs> And this is the greatest episode ever. We are bored out of our skulls in Indiana, as most people no, are. You guys were on a mission to win a championship. Well, that too. Yeah, we, we were bored too. out of our minds yeah. in Indiana. We were bored out of our minds in Indiana. Here's, here's how I know that was a good time. I remembered that podcast almost more than us being down 27 and coming back and winning. In that game. In the next game. Oh, the, the next, next game. Day. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, which is pretty wild. Like, to be like, oh, yeah, you're down yeah, in the but, playoff but in, game. But in, but, in, but in your defense, Channing, you're a bit aloof, right? You're a bit aloof. <laughs> I like that. Okay, I can you deal with You hit the game-winning three and had no idea. He had no idea. So we're walking out. It was a game-winning. No, no. Yes, it was. A couple seconds left. Uh, uh, okay, so he come, we come all the way back. Channing, excuse me, I, don't, I was only on the court for a little bit. That, that second unit came all the way back. And... After the game, like, it was an epic comeback. After the game, me and Channing are walking back to the hotel, and somebody in the street was like, hey, nice game winner, Channing. And Channing's like, that wasn't a game winner. I'm like, Channing, that three was with, like, like eight seconds ago. He's like, it was? Yeah. And I'm just like, oh, God. Yeah. Sometimes That's- you got to be present, except I'm not good at numbers. Again, I have <laughs> you, saw an open, you saw an saw open, open shot. Three, and it was right next to their bench. So whether we were up 30, down 30, I was going to shoot that thing, and I was I was so ready. I had the wackest shit-talking comments to them. I was ready to say anything. Yeah, okay. Speaking of not being good at numbers, my dad has this epic drinking game called Biz Buzz. Oh, God. And you sit in a circle, and you're all drinking, and anytime you come across, you count as high as you can. Anytime right. you come across a three or anything divisible by three, it's biz. Anytime you come across a seven... Or anything divisible by seven, it's buzz. You yeah. lost us already. <laughs> Channing's eyes. <laughs> I was like, you lost me. You lost me all the way. Yeah. All Done. Way. I'm going to be asleep by, by biz zero. Biz <laughs> three. Uh, all right. 30. So really to set the table, because we're going to have a slew of episodes that come from this. Right. Um, we are here tonight, which is Friday, Saturday, Sunday, different, uh, a, an array of guests, if you will, from yes. current players to talent in the media, um, to big names, to coaches. Um, Logan. We're going to get Logan's bitch ass I've back I've really on been trying to get Logan. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't know why Logan just caught a stray. <laughs> but nonetheless, it's Summer League weekend. It's obviously a big weekend. And so I want to get – did you guys ever play in Summer League? Oh, really? yeah. Uh, hey, they changed the rule because of me. What, what was what? the rule? <laughs> the 10 foul rule. <laughs> Wait, no what does way. that mean? That you could fact. get 10 fouls in summer league? That is yeah. a fact. Yes. Please look Did this up. Did you play in 1960? What? Okay. Yeah. I played in 2005. <laughs> and I graduated high school. I was playing against Amari. Uh-huh. And I you just kept decided. Fouling. Yeah, I kept hacking the shit out of his ass. It was not, like, not on purpose, but like. As what are rookie, you supposed to do? What are you so Like there's no one in college to prepare you to go against Amari Stoudemire at like. And he was rookie of the year that year. <laughs> he was rookie of the year. And he that was year. mad that he had to play because every time he scored, I think he looked back at the bench like, "Yo, get me out this game." <laughs> so I had to take that punishment. Uh, but yeah, I kept fouling, and the coach was like, "I don't care. You can't foul out." So then they made it a tenth foul, like tenth yeah, foul. Like you foul 10 out. Ten is enough. Ten yeah. is enough. It's the Channing Fry rule, I think. 
Yeah. But we're just going to go with it. So that. wait a second. They really had Summer League without fouls. I'm still hung up on this. Well, no, no you, you can't, can't foul, foul out. That you can't foul out. Well, if you well, watch Summer League because, because, at the end of well, Summer the League. Well, point, the point yeah. is, the point of Summer League is truly to get reps and to have guys get experience. So you don't want a guy to be in foul trouble in the first quarter or a guy struggling to stay on the court because he's in foul trouble over the course of a game. It's like, no, this is for you to play. This is this is pick up with referees and no one can foul out. That's the purpose of it is just to get guys experience. Yeah. If, if, like, experience. Yeah. if Derek Rose as a rookie or, excuse me, that was a burp. <laughs> that was a burp. Uh, or like Chet or some of these higher end guys are playing and they get two fouls and don't play. People aren't going to come watch these games. They want oh. fans to be able to see these players at the next level uh, playing faster college basketball. Yeah. That part. Really, that's what they want. Yeah. They want to see him play. What was the what was the quote that you just read me from? So Hi. I was talking to uh, I was talking to my guy Henry out there, and he was like, mm-hmm. "What do you think about summer league?" And I was like, "I think summer league's great for certain people, but I think summer league is just faster college. It's just faster, more spaced out college. If you are dominating college, for the most part, you're going to dominate summer, summer league, league, right? And and dominate meaning you can take over a game for six to eight minutes at a time." So everyone thinks, oh, these players should from college. If you're the number one pick, you should have 50 and 40 and 20. No, because at the end of the day, you're also playing European guys who are trying to make the, the NBA. Elite. You're yes. playing men. Yeah. Right? You're not playing. You're not 22 where you're playing like Utah State or some other This is the G League. Have. You're playing yeah. in the G League right now. For sure. You're playing men who know how to play. Or like Moses Moody, we were talking about that. He played on a championship team, and now he's playing summer league. He's like... This slow Yeah, game. I've been chasing like, everybody. Okay, so if you have a high draft pick, and you bring in Jalen Green. He has the talent and the wherewithal to dominate the game to where now your, your high draft pick doesn't get an opportunity to be their full self. Fair. Because if you get somebody like one, two, three in the draft last year who was rookie of the year or second or third, when they come to this, they go, oh, we hooping. Yeah. I'm playing these little young boys. Why, why, you're not even going to see what's going to happen to these next guys. I would love, again, I would love to see these high draft picks like Chet, like some of the other guys come out and hoop without having, sometimes you need less is more. Giddy is a playmaker. Yeah. He makes plays for other people. So, yes, the more experience for him is better, I think. Yeah. When you bring in guys who are scorers and shooters, that may take away the opportunity for your wings that you bring in to say to Richard, like, they're not going to bring in Jason Kidd and say, like, hey, go play with Richard. You want Richard to make plays and learn them so that he could do it three times instead of one during a game. If you get 10 shots, J.K. wants you to shoot all 10. But you may make the right play. Well, and, and, and that's where, like, if you have a veteran guy like Green, like if you yeah. were to say invite him here, maybe you only have him play three games, right. three of the sure. seven or eight games. So it's like, hey, now you got three games of playing with your future teammate. And ultimately we want to lead, right? We want this to lead towards wins, right? You want this to lead towards wins in the future. And the sooner you can speed up that process, that was it. I truly think that teams make it seem like 19 year olds and 20 year olds should choose whether or not they go to summer league. And if your team as a team, you're choosing not to send your, your player to summer league after his first couple of years, you're hurting his development. And I only say this from experience. Unless and, they have a serious injury. Uh, like yeah, serious injury. Seri- right. I'm talking so about a healthy feet. player. Yeah. I'm talking about a healthy player. Right. And, like, your goal should have been, unless you had surgery or something, when the season's over, you take your month off, you get back to work, you really should start working towards summer league. Even, like, third year. Like, third year summer league. You know, I had Scott Skiles come up and tell me. He's like, hey, Richard, you know what I would really appreciate? He was like, hey, if next summer during, during – um, during a summer league, if you can come and just practice with the guys. So maybe I can be like, yo, this guy looks good until I see him next to a real pro. Right. And he was saying this to me and I was in my year 10. I'm like, yeah, no, but yeah, but that's, but guys will come here and practice and and, and mess around. Gerg used to have a camp and it's like, Oh, this guy, this guy, man, Oh, (laughs) our second round pick looks good. Our second round picks look good. He might play until all of a sudden you see him next to like, a guy that's like a, an actual rotation player. Now you might look at him a little differently, but this is the experience. Or you'd be like, no, he can play. Like, look, look at how he defended this. Look at like Matisse Thibel. He was a late first round pick. This dude was an all world defender here in his first two years. 
But and Doc Rivers didn't even know. Doc Rivers traded. Doc Rivers got or Doc Rivers wasn't didn't draft him. Doc Rivers got here his second year. And I was like, yeah, it's crazy that he broke the Pac-12 record in steals. He's like, he did. And it's like sometimes as coaches, like you seeing a guy versus like an actual pro and seeing what they're capable of doing can change your assessment of a player. So I just I just don't want to to gloss over summer league like this isn't a valuable tool that people aren't using probably to their fullest capability. Whether it's just to be seen or fashion or playing. Yes. Summer league is hype. It, oh, it's it is where it's at for about 10 days in July. That's for sure. Um guys, what? <laughs> is your cocktail kicking in? No. Um oh. I was going to go one direction, but I want to ask you the thought, your thoughts, because it kind of came out just recently um, about the Warriors and the luxury tax. Pay that money. <laughs> pay that money. You saw what Joe Lakeup said. How what much Joe is Lakeup a championship? Paid? Joe Lakeup said, oh, in fact, in Vegas, I'll be at, we're going to be at the Board of Governors meeting Tuesday. Let me tell you, they're not happy. It's not just us. Other teams are going into the luxury tax now as well. We kind of blew a hole in the system. And it's not a good look from the league's perspective. What is your take on that? Well, I, didn't, I, don't, I don't fully get the context. What's he saying it as? Buying championships. Oh, that I don't think they bought a championship. I don't think <laughs> they No, I don't think they bought a championship. They paid their players. They, they don't want to see it happen. There are limits. I'm not going to say what they are, but there are limits on what you can do. Well, well, this is when you're you're this is where they get afraid <laughs> as if somebody has but see, only in capitalism. See, in, in America, capitalism is really popular. <laughs> Right, like Walmart, you know, Amazon, Tesla, like capitalism's great. Target, Tar Target, you know, capitalism's like great. Then all of a sudden, it gets to sports teams, and you're like, we need to stop what this group of people can make, right? Because we want fairness. Well, capitalism isn't about fairness, and if you can afford to pay your players by the rules, and you got to pay a tax, and you're willing to pay the tax, for instance, Paul Allen, right, one of the richest men in the world, recently, you know, passed away. Uh, the Lakers called the Lakers called the Trailblazers. The Lakers called the Trailblazers, and they were trying to do a trade. And they were like, uh, they were like, "Hey, this is our deal, and we want to offer you guys cash." And they were like, "Oh, we don't take cash." And like, what do you mean? You as a team, you don't take cash? Like that's part of like, the, like you know, structure cash considerations. And they're like, we have the one of the richest men in the world that own our team. And that cash ain't paying no, for cash. Ain't, <laughs> cash ain't doing nothing. Cash ain't doing nothing for us. You tell Paul Allen we traded our second round pick and we got a half million dollars cash. He'd be like, "Well, our second round pick could have become yeah, oh, for sure. a great player." Don't get me cash. Get me assets. Mm -hmm, and sure. so, yeah, when you got deep pockets, the way you view this business is different. Let's let's just keep this a buck. A they drafted Steph. They yeah. draft Dre. Dre. Yeah. You draft Dre. Then you trade for Andrew Wiggins, who everybody in the league had a certain stigma about, mm -hmm. which I'm not going to repeat, including myself at the time. Yeah. He comes here. He accepts his role, ex especially in a bad year. Then the next year, they're talking about if Steph wasn't Steph, he'd be a finals MVP. He had 17 and 17 games, 15 and 17. So, like, where did they go wrong? Then they draft James Wiseman. Then they draft Kaminga. Like, who, like, because they pay their guys, who are their guys, mm -hmm. why, like, why in the world are you, like, punishing them for that? Mm -hmm. You're only going to get that for so long. Until somebody beats that, whatever that luxury tax is, I'm doing it. Because you notice, Cleveland, it took 50 years for Cleveland to win a championship. What Golden State has is immeasurable when it comes to money yeah like it is it is if any person on any any owner could emulate what golden state is doing and they said here's a price tag i promise you the city would pony up and get it i, I wonder if oklahoma city would do things differently now with james harden kd and like like would they keep that would they pay the money to go into the tax and try. I don't, I don't, I don't even know what the salary cap implications would have been to try and keep three future MVPs, right? Like you're penalizing a team and you're saying, if we can afford this, this is what we're, this is what we're willing to pay. Mm -hmm. And even if you look at it from, from, I, I know I was joking about capitalism, but when LeBron James left Cleveland the first time, the downtown area, don't, I don't want to talk about the it. downtown area was a ghost town. <laughs> 
right? The casino, the restaurants. I don't want to talk about the, it. It, it, was, it, was, it was bad. We're, not, we're, we're, just, talk, we're just talking about... I, we're t- I we're t- didn't, though, actually. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we're just not talking. where I lived. Yeah. No one knows where Ali just, Clifton lives. Yeah. So, no one. So it's, it's basically like when Living he came back... Behind Dover Gardens. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> the Dover Gardens burger. Dude, right. it was the so wings. good. Yeah, the wings were on fire. No, but no, that's easy. Too. I just think the guys make so no. much money. And for everybody that keeps talking about how much money the players are, are making... The reason why these salaries are getting so high is because the owners are making so much money. We split the money with them 50-50, basically. So, like, when you see somebody signing a $250 million deal, Mm -hmm. like, when you see Jokic signs two hundred seventy six, million, it's because, you know, the Kroenke family is making $300 million or more. So, it's like, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? So, it's like all this money gets split. We don't make more than the owners. And so, for the owners that have to go into the tax and pay some of that money, Fine. Let, like, if they want to pay, give some of the money back, give it back. Think about what Jokic does for the Nuggets in Denver, downtown Denver. Every game sold out. What? Every game sold out. Every this night. Is two-time, how many? I think there's only been six two-time MVPs in the history of basketball, and you have an opportunity to keep him Can you and name pay them? him his value. Uh, uh, Jokic. Steve Nash. Steve Nash. Yep. Jordan. Jordan. Uh, Magic. Magic. Maybe Bird. Kareem. I don't know if Kareem... Um, uh, Giannis, Jokic, ooh, uh, oh, come Tim on, Duncan, you guys. Come Will Chamberlain. On. You're talking back to back MVPs. Yeah. yeah, come on, I, I can't with you. Wait, I'm what trying. What do you mean to, LeBron, you can't? But you're looking, you're LeBron, looking at Siri. LeBron won a back to back. Yeah, I want to. That, I want to say how many? How many has there, has there been, Allie? I'm gonna look it up. We don't even have a voice of God here at the studio. MVP. Uh, anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What the hell? I'll say this. Downtown. Denver, the excitement, the enjoyment of players going, oh, I remember when Jokic won his MVP. Yeah. Like, oh, All I remember. All the bars remember. are filled up. Now they become fans. Mm-hmm. You have to keep those guys because you're looking at what they're making now, but you're not looking at generational fans. Yeah. Oh, this when is you a great players, trivia. Is yeah. It? How many yeah. has there been? What, 10, 11? There's been one, or two, four, six, eight. 10, Damn. 12, 13. 13. Oh, yeah. Okay. 10, 11. All right. Who 13. did you get? Who did you we guess? Got, we got LeBron. We got we got LeBron. We got Steve Nash. We got Tim Duncan. Yep. Uh, oh. We got... Uh, Jokic. Jokic. Yep. Uh, Giannis. Giannis. Yep. Uh, Magic. Yep. Larry. Yep. Uh, we say Jordan. Do we say Jordan? You didn't, but yep. Uh, uh, Kareem. Yep. John Bill, Havlicek. No. Bill Russell. <laughs> yes. Wow. Um, I wasn't sure uh, Will Chamberlain. Oh, didn't Jerry West do it twice? Uh uh-uh. uh. Will, Will Chamberlain. Uh, There's Bill. two more. Mike in? Uh, nope. Uh, like, is it in the 50s or 60s? Wait, that's the only one that you have left. We all got one left? God, we're good. Yeah. We're good. That's, yeah, we nice, bro. <laughs> yeah, you have, no, 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 hang on. You have one left. That's, early that's like, 80s. Early Ooh. 80s. Dr. J? No. Nope. Early 80s. Moses Malone? Moses yeah. Malone. Come on, yeah, man. We know our shit, bro. <laughs> We know our shit, y'all. Big Mosey. Now the one, the yeah. three, three, yeah, yeah, yeah. three, the three. God, that went, well done, my friend. Uh, MJ, MJ. No. MJ didn't win. No, MJ, good try. MJ didn't win three. Well, it got to be like Bill. It got to be old school. Wait a second. Three, three in a row. Uh, Larry, Wilt. No, no, uh, Larry. Okay, yes. Um, uh, Bill. Yes. Uh, and you already said it, Wilt. Wilt. Yeah. I wish there was a station. That would literally take <laughs> MVPs of each year, find all the footage they have, and play it for like three days straight. Like you know, every you know when day. that happened? What? COVID. Oh God. <laughs> That's when that yeah. happened. Yeah, I know. We watch. We watch a lot. People would go, "Oh, what is is this guy that good?" And then you would see the film and realize like how good those players were. And sometimes we talk about the old school players, and sometimes the old school players talk about us. But realistically, how much film? Of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, he made one three in his career. Have people watched? Like he made one three. I don't. Th- were you that? on? No, you were on the episode when we talked about that. He made one three, nope. and he's made thirty nine. He scored thirty nine thousand points. Bucket. Thirty eight, thirty nine thousand. You're a bucket. He one was just a bucket three. to death. And that's what I'm saying. It's like I wish they don't rate well. Film. They don't rate well, Channing. Watching a 1986 grainy film. 
with, with Chick Hearn talking. With all due respect, it doesn't it doesn't rate well. So that they'll give you the the finals, they'll give you those. Yeah. If someone had a marquee game, and it'll say at the bottom when when Magic had his forty four point triple double. Right. So it's like, oh, this is what I'm watching to specific like to specifically look at one thing. If you guys could play in any era, now. Really? Uh, what? Well, the money, yes. <laughs> no, uh, I, I felt like I would have practiced dribbling more, and then I would have been a hundred million. <laughs> honestly, I can't really I, move my feet that well, though. Uh, honestly, I think, <laughs> I, like, look, maybe it was because it was where my prime was, but I think the era that we played, like, why are you pointing at me? I no, I'm saying, no, I'm saying, like Richard that that we played it right now. I, and I would, and I still prefer. I would prefer. I would prefer to. I like the physicalness of the game. I and you know, I me. didn't I, like having the guards shack see, I and yell. Yeah, me. see, I didn't have that's to go. See, that's, and, that, and that's respect. That's your. That, and that I hurts. no one liked guarding those guys. So I don't even view that. I'm saying for me, I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to play a game where like. It was nothing but threes, and I shot 14 threes. Like, if I didn't try and dunk on people 10 times, like, that's what I woke like up. Sign me up. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. We were different. I Like, oh, I okay. wanted to wake up and dunk on people. <laughs> like, that was the only, like, me hitting seven threes might make Sports Center. If I caught a body, that was going to be number one, number two, top <laughs> five. That's going on. Like, that's what I wanted to do. So, like, I like the era where that's where people were trying to do. That was the gold. Oh. Yeah. Now it's like, if I like would sprint now, they don't even sprint for dunks on, on transition. Rich. They like run out to the three point line. I want to run for dunks. I still like I disagree with you a little bit about where your game would absolutely excel. And I'm saying would I excel? I'm saying what I would like. She had the question Richard, was with the where spacing I would like. Which era? now. Here's the problem: we with the spacing we have now, guys get boomed on on the regular. So unless it is, we have seen every dunk known to man so people getting dunked on is only amazing when they are two names when yoke or when uh mb dunks on my tally sorry yeah. hey. big, v. Yeah. Big, v. <laughs> big v big v big v one of our assistant I mean, coaches listen, from the Cavs when we won the championship big, big was there ass, boy. <laughs> <laughs> listen Dying. when mb dunks on carl anthony towns that is that is sports center number one for three days yeah when Joel and B dunks on somebody else, I don't. It's eh, okay. that's what that let me be. It's that's names stuff. But me, you would have so many opportunities to drive right from the left corner. And I wanted to dunk. On, I only want to dunk, dunk on bigs. There's not as many bigs, but Channing. I'm just telling you. There's not as many there's bigs. Not as many bigs. All the bigs. Richard, all the bigs could you dunk a basketball right now? Oh uh, yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I sleep. can dunk a basketball could, right now. If you gave me two weeks, I, I mean, could, like. I could, not just like go up and like lay it in, like yeah. dunk y a basketball. Yes. In an NBA game. I, NBA I, game? I, no, if you put me in summer Are we league, half court? It, listen. <laughs> if you put me in summer league right now, yeah, if you put that. me in summer league right now, I could catch a body. What? Hundred percent. Richard, you pop a hamstring. So oh, are we about I'm to not, watch him no, pop no, no, a hamstring no, 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 on no, no, Monday? No, no, no. Let me say this. Let me say this. That was. That was. I'm not. I'm not that saying. I'm not saying that. Like. I'm not saying that. Like. I would just like grab a beer and go throw in a jersey. What I'm saying is if you were like, if you were like three weeks ago, hey, Richard, you know, go play in summer league. We're going to have you play one game. I could catch a body. I, first of this all, is, this I is just coming some, off Channing his like a uh, touching uh, finals, 11. finals appearance on the sand where he felt like yes, first the of next all, greatest first thing all, in sand volleyball. Lost weekend. in the finals <laughs> to my guy, to my guy, uh, Troy Fields. Who Good is luck participating in the, Hermo in the Hermo Her Her Hermosa <laughs> Open. He's Chase Budinger. Chan lost to him in the finals. Of the four man, but What's like, Chase doing? Let's talk about Chase Budinger. First. Chase is Who's doing saying? great. He just, he just had a baby. A he just Congrats, had a baby. Chasey. Shout shout out the shout only out white to white dude ever seen to jump Jay, from it, two feet from the free throw line and dunk it. Yeah, That's Jay Fine, his his his, one, two, his beautiful wife from the free throw line dunked it. What other sport did he play? Volley it was basketball, 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 and volleyball. Oh, line. just those two. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah. It's like oh, he was just the greatest at those two. Yeah. I played him one time in volleyball, and you know anybody who loves video games, you know like Street Fighter, Ken and Ryu, throw them Hadoukens. Yeah. He hit that I have no bitch so that hard at me one time. I just say, you know what? Nah. You, that, it had fire coming off of it. Poof. It hit the hit the sand so hard it made glass. I said, nope. Check. Yeah. Check it out. Vitaly, you want to you know come what? in? Nah. Do you, know, do you, you know want to come in? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Come in. Yeah. 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 Come on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, you so, can come in. We'll talk about so, it. So do you know Chase? You know, so Chase, like when he was young, he was like a phenom. But he was kind of like, when you say like, when you watch like those guys that are just big and different playing the sport. Chase was six foot eight with a 40 inch vertical 
but like moved around super agile. Yay, Vitale. Vitale, how are you? You want to sit down? You, you, you want to yeah. talk to us? Yeah, join sit us. down. Join, join us. us. Yeah. We're just sitting here. Guys, see, this is the beautiful thing about being here in the wing. Yeah, grab a headset. Yeah, what's up, Vitaly? How you doing, guys? Big so feed. Are, <laughs> are you allowed to are you allowed to be here? Uh, I'm gonna see why not. <laughs> <laughs> v, for the people listening, where are you at? Where are you coaching? Hang on, hang on, hang on. No, 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 no. Channing, you should know this. Trivia. Where what? is Vitaly coaching? In oh. I saw him last season. Yeah, <laughs> yeah thank it was you. in Portland. It was the only game before. I went to. Oh, Hey, low key, I like I like the Memphis Grizzlies. Like yeah. I I would pay to watch them like out of my own pocket. Yeah, yeah. It's because you feel like <laughs> you you're watching you're watching Coach Carter's team. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> no, I like it that they're they like have a chip on their shoulder and they like grew something out of nothing. And I like I think John Morant's one of my favorite players to watch. He was the second pick. How's Jaren, that nothing? Jaron Jackson Jr. Okay, so there's I'm been joking, a lot I'm of number two picks. Joking. <laughs> that don't have yeah. He's a I bad think Jared man. Jackson Jr. is a lot of fun to watch because he shoots that thing like I would shoot it. Yeah. Sometimes I'm like, oh, why'd you shoot? Oh, good shot. Good shot. Can we talk to This Vitaly? is Vitaly oh, Potapinko for those tuning in. He is now with the Memphis Grizzlies. He was with us with the Cavs way back when. We just saw him walking through the hallway. Uh, how is uh, coaching? How are you? How is everything going? I'm, I'm great. Thank you guys for having me. I appreciate <laughs> it. I, I watched you guys before, and, you know, so your, your podcast. I appreciate it for having me. But um, yeah. I agree with you. We're an exciting team. The last two years, we improved. Uh, you know, we have a talent like John ja Morant, you know, Jaron Jer Jackson, uh, which is a, they had a great year. And um, the one thing I have to point it out, why team grew, because yeah. Ja was injured, and we had other injuries with, you know, main players, but guys stepped up. Weren't like, you guys 20 and 8? No, they were at better record than that. With they, they only lost like three without, without, without Jaw, like three, three yes, or four. Twenty and three. With, without Jaw, we had a good <laughs> record. Obviously, we played some teams. You know, we sure had a win, but I think everybody uh, else stepped up and uh, played their role well. Guys had no pressure. Uh, Tyus Jones had a great year. Yes. You know, playing, being backup, and also as the role of starting point guard. Wait, wait. Can we talk about? I don't know if you guys have been watching summer league, but. Have y'all seen Big Boy going to work, Kenny Lofton Jr.? Hey, yo. Yeah. I love, he reminds me. Okay, listen. Okay. Well. I loved <laughs> okay? I loved playing against Zebo. I saw Zebo at the uh, airport, and him and I, like, we are completely great, opposite. Great dude. The greatest dude and the nicest. But we would tell the ref, hey, we go, we gonna fuck each other up tonight. Let us go. Because it was my chance to like see how physical I could get. Now, mind you, I was in the ice tub. For <laughs> Zebo was doing that every night. Every He's night. Doing every and night. for me, I was like, you know, in Phoenix, so I'm shooting these trees. He goes, well, hey, you know, you can't be shooting all these trees. I said, what am I going to do? Post you up? Stop it. Oh, but like, a hey, I love Lofton's feel, his skill. And that's what I was telling my brother, Logan. I was like, I would rather be 6'7 to 6'9 skilled and physical than taller and athletic because i think this game now the game that we play is very skilled if the teams that win if you look at boston if you look at uh golden state if you look at dallas if you look at the suns they have five skilled players when they want to win on a court that can make decisions Right, which back in the day, it was like you had one or two guys that made decisions and everyone else went like this. <laughs> and they had one job, right? There's no yeah. more specialist I, in the game. Yeah, I agree with you. And that's the beauty of like having two lineups. Right. You can go big lineup, you can go small lineup, you can be your five skilled wife, you know, five who can stretch the floor, mm -hmm. shoot the ball, you know, who can score. Definitely skilled player. I uh, needs to get in better shape. You know, right. to into totally. the yeah. game, but, but it's a process. Doesn't you know? everybody? But, but no, no, right. but, but that's the thing for him. You look like, look, our boy, Kevin Love, right? You look at even, I, I'll say Draymond, even Zebo. When For these sure. guys who have like a different type of build, uh, and Zion's one of those guys that's going to have to do it. When those guys change their bodies and compliment oh, to Kevin, because we oh, know what Kevin, we know hurt. the amount of time that Kevin put on his oh. body, right? Some they, things never change. No, that. but I'm saying the, the, the amount of time that Kevin had to put on his body to crazy. change it, it's crazy. And if that's what you're, if he does that, if Kenny Lofton Jr. does that, and becomes like the physical strong, lose that, you know, 10, 15 pounds and stays the there. It's just baby fat. 
Yeah. How old is he? No, but this is the thing. He's only 19, right? Oh, <laughs> what? <laughs> Stop oh, it. He's, he's skilled he like that, man. Yeah, no he's worried. got a motor, but he's I'm got. He is. Yeah. I know, but what you're asking him is to, you ain't eating mama's cooking no more, and we're playing every single day. So but, I know some guys can handle this. Some guys can't. But with his skill and opportunity, he has a big opportunity to play on this team. He's out of this draft. I think he's next to Chet. I think he's the most unique. Yeah, he, I think he's, he's the most unique player yeah. out of this draft. I think he could become very, uh, have a good career, functional big. For you know, sure. I mean, starting or even come to the bench, but play major. He plays basketball. with his eyes up. So sure. now that I've gotten older, guys that play basketball with their eyes up, he's yeah. making moves like he's at the park versus top three picks. Versus regular guys like he, I strong, like his guy. Bro. I saw yeah, him. I thought big. he was six seven. I, he looked at me in the eye. I said, yeah. "That's a fine. That? That's a fine." Hey, Vitaly, <laughs> Vitaly, Vitaly, really quickly. Yeah. So I'm gonna put you on the spot. Like, mm -hmm. so you walk by us one time. You went to the store, and then you walk back. Like, what were you getting out of the store? Uh, I just got some snacks. Oh, okay. Yeah, so. Okay. I Vitaly, know okay. Here. I, say, I put the dude. I paid like thirty dollars. You know. I mean? <laughs> oh, so, yeah. Yeah, never again. Vitelli, I have to ask you one question since we're uh, here in 2016. You were with the coaches when we won. Yeah. When, like, what was those? For, and uh, don't give us the details. Right, right. But what were those conversations like? And when did you guys go? Holy shit, we got a chance. So, great question. I mean, definitely, you know, I mean, the, the, the game, yeah, the game seven. I mean, when we, we made it. <laughs> no, no, it no, wasn't no, until no, game seven. No, no, no. But I'm saying, like, uh, game seven. The last two minutes. Game, game seven, yeah. We, like, okay, <laughs> like, we're in it. But, like, second and third game, a game we start coming back and right. winning, and we got there. Okay, we feel a groove, we're going. But still. You it was feel, everything 50-50. Right, 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 right. We were like, we won a game, it was 50-50. Right, that's a fine. Hey, Vitelli got this. That's another $1,500. That's, 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 that's why you, the minute your coach so, hears it, fine. But, but you know, I mean, we were 50-50. And, I mean, we already been said so much, uh, you know, coverage is everything. Oh. Him, so it just, it's come down to making plays, you know what if, I mean? So, if there was a moment that you look back that makes you smile, whether that's the first round sweep in Detroit, second round uh, sweep it or sweep Atlanta. in Atlanta, Atlanta, and then sweep and, and then going beating Toronto gentlemanly, yeah. <laughs> gentlemanly. <laughs> which of those three, not the finals, which of those three was your like? Okay, let me go and let me see. I think Toronto. I think like going in, we saw Toronto going to be the toughest opponent. Right. You know, what I mean, they battle tested the, the number of talent they had, but you know, ended up with you know we swept them. It was like the best. best That's a five. <laughs> but it was like another best year. Um, some of the assistant coaches calling me. So I was um, about to say you got to. Yeah, I'm go, sorry. Go, I have go, to get go, ready. Go. I have to oh, get ready. Oh, I have to get ready. Guys, thanks for having me. How do me. I oh, explain to Larry? All the best. Are we?